Hello, everyone. Forgot it's important to have a microphone today. All right, here we go. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Monday. I am slightly behind. As you can see, I'm in my gym garb. And that's okay. You're not always, not always gonna be perfectly on time. You're not always gonna be ready to go. And that's a-okay. You can't be perfect all the time. Um, I'm going to Florida tomorrow to play some poker tournaments. Thanks to all of you consistently asking me. We're going to be having a breakfast there for all of you. It's going to be on day 1B of the main event. With any luck, I make it through day 1A. Um, so hopefully that will be an off day. If it's not an off day, well, we'll make do. So um, that'll be good. If you're uh, on my email list, you have been sent an email, I think. If anyone's gotten the email, let me know. If you're not on my list, well, then you won't get the email. Um, if you haven't got the email yet, well, well, we'll be sending it out ASAP, and I'll have to get on it and make sure it gets sent out. Fernando says, good morning, you're back. I'm back as well. One of our members, Doug, cashed, your, cashed the World Series event. Great. Another one of my members, Tice, just took second out of a whole load of people to win... 10 million Philippine pesos. Now, I don't know how many, actually, I, learned, I figured out how many 10 million Philippine pesos are. It is um, about $200,000, so congrats to Tice. Students are winning left and right. Hi, James. You want to say hello real quick? I know you have to go deal with Thomas. Can you say good morning? Good morning. Do you want to show everybody your boo-boo? Yeah. Show him your boo-boo. James stuck his hand in the elevator. Now look at him. He has three Band-Aids. I learned one of my friends had, had did the exact same thing, and he had to get skin graft because he ripped a lot of skin off. James only ripped a little bit of skin off. Did you have fun doing that? Yeah. Did you like going to the doctor? Yeah. They took x-ray? Yeah. You're such a strong boy, right? Are you going to do it again? Yeah. No, no, no. You're not going to do it again. Yeah. All right, have a good day. Tell everybody bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say good luck. Good luck. Have, say have a great week. Have a great week. Okay. See ya. Bye. All right, so good. He will learn three more times. Yeah. They say it takes a normal person something like, I don't even know the right, I don't even know the numbers, like seven or 15 times before they learn something. Hopefully it doesn't take him uh, that many times to learn not to stick his hand in the elevator. Edward says, the elevators at Hard Rock have sensors so they won't close on your kid's hands. It actually didn't shut on his hand. When the door opens like this, he put his hand like right here and it sucked his hand into the side. So that's what, that's what happened. It wasn't it slamming. It was he put his hand on the side, and then it shook his, took his hand on the inside. Anyway, he's fine. He'll survive. It's good to have trauma. A little bit. Not a lot. A little bit of trauma. Um, why am I not on a plane to Hard Rock? Because we're going tomorrow. First $1,000 tournament starts 5 p.m. tomorrow. So we're going to be landing at 3 p.m. Some people ask me, what is my super sick tournament preparation? Um, sometimes it's just to, to show up. 10 minutes before the tournament, hop in. It's a $1,000 turbo. Tony says you made it to Montreal to the Playground Poker Club, and it's one of the top venues you ever played at. It is great. It's a fantastic place. How'd I get started with poker? I was playing Magic the Gathering with a bunch of friends, and we decided to play a $1 buy-in tournament one night. We played those for a while. The same guy won most of the times. So I realized it was a skill game. So I started studying, just like I did with chess and Magic the Gathering. Put $50 online on Party Poker eventually and turned it into about $350,000. So I took $50, turned it into $350,000 in three years when I was 18 to 21 years old. Now I'm old. And uh, we have more than $350,000, so that's lucky. Um, poker players and toddlers both have a difficult time avoiding hurting themselves. Yeah, James doesn't care at all about physical well-being he um, of my, me or him or anybody else, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, but he'll be okay. He'll figure it out. Will I be there at, I guess, Montreal for the World Series events? No. I'm going to Hard Rock tomorrow. They have a 1K, a 2K, a 5K, a 10K, a 25K, another 2K, some satellites to the 25K. All in a week. Well, I did hear we have seven good tournaments, plus some more. You can re-enter all of them. So um, we can be in for about 80K. Am I going to play any cash at Hard Rock? Probably not. You just heard all those tournaments I listed off. So, um, no, we're going to be busy. Made today two of event number two at World Series Poker Cherokee and took 147th place. Nice job. 
How tough of an opponent is Bryn Kenny? Bryn Kenny is a very tough opponent. Uh, nobody, nobody wants to have Bryn Kenny at their table because Bryn Kenny uh, plays amazingly well. And uh, you don't like messing with Bryn Kenny. Have you tried Forest Magic Mushroom Coffee? We have the Lion's Mane Tea, and I think it is good. I'm on a subscription with them where every two mo every month I think I get well two every two months I get two boxes, and it's um I, I like it. I have no problem with it. I drink it probably. 70% of the time when I'm having coffee slash tea. Poker appears to be so much luck. We're going to talk about that today. Today, our topic is persistence, but not dumb persistence, intelligent persistence. Dumb persistence will lead you into uh, many, many problems in life. For example, if you are bad at poker and you play it consistently and persistently and you do the same thing all the time, you're just going to watch your bankroll go right into the dumpster. Every single time. So you have to be smart. Let's talk about what persistence is. I looked up the definition for all of you. Persistence is firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Okay? So firm or obstinate continuance. That means you are sticking to it in a course of action, presumably a set course of action, in spite of difficulty or opposition. That means, say you're just losing a lot of money and you just keep doing it and you just run your bankroll right into the ground because you're bad. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking being dumb. Or say you, um, every night you go out and uh, you get wasted on drugs or alcohol. Um, not that kind of persistence. That's bad. What I'm referring to is intelligent persistence where you're willing to iterate and willing to learn and willing to study and willing to move forward and progress, right? A lot of my poker students to be fair, lots of people in poker, if they play tournaments especially, their bankroll is usually not at the peak. It trickles downwards. And that's okay, right? Because you realize you're not going to get a score all that often. In preparation for today, I wanted to um, run a quick variance simulation. You can um, find the Poker Dope uh, Tournament Variance Calculator on their site. I did a very simple thing. I think this is probably where a lot of you all are. We're going to play 200... 1,000 person tournaments where 15% of the field gets paid. Here, I'm bringing it up right here. I'm showing you what I'm pulling up. So we have a 1,000 person tournament. If you're on Instagram, sorry, you can't see this. 153 people get paid, so 15% of the field. Buy-in's $10. Rake is $1. 10, pretty standard. What is our ROI? I'm going to give us a generous 25% ROI. And we're going to play 200 of these. And we're going to simulate this 10 times. So this is basically, if you're playing every weekend, this is roughly like a four or five year period for you. If you play one tournament a week. If you play a lot, this is going to be indicative of like what a good pros year is going to look like. So let's scroll down and you're going to see on average, this is what it looks like. This is 10 different tournament players graphs. You see we have um, their bankroll. Let's pull this over just a little bit more. You see the number of tournaments they've played and you're going to see, scrolls forward, it's kind of a big graph. What ends up happening is, um, here's the even line right here. By the end of our sample, Four out of the 10 simulations are down. They're down money. Four out of 10 of them are down. So what does that mean? It means if you play 200 tournaments, again, if you play once a week, this is like four or five years of play, you're going to be down on average if you have a 25% ROI in 1,000-person tournaments. And that's just because tournaments with 1,000 players are very, very top-heavy, right? So you have to be persistent, right? You must be. If you sit there and think, I'm just going to win all the time, it's not gonna work out for you. So um, in this simulation, the biggest winner won at 100% ROI, won about 2,200 bucks. Biggest loser lost half of their money. Started with, uh, they put in uh, $2,000 in buy-ins and they lost a thousand of it, minus 50% ROI. Now you may ask, is that normal? Is that standard? The answer is uh, yeah. Um, with this variance calculator, you can run it many, many, many times. Um, I'll run it again and I'll get a slightly different answer because we're only doing 10 simulations. Let's see. We'll calculate again. Um, and this time, ooh, a much nastier example. Now um, only 4 out of 10 were up. So anyway, as you can see, there's a lot of variance in poker, right? And you have to understand that you are going to have big upswings and you're going to have big downswings. But especially if you're playing poker like a lot of people do where they play tournaments with a lot of people, you're usually going to be down, even over a lot of tournaments, which is why you must put in volume. So many people, they want to play a tournament in a week and then complain about a bad run because they've been losing for two months. 
eight tournaments. Eight tournaments is not a lot of tournaments. And it's very important to understand that. What's that link? It's called pokerdope.com. Go to the poker tools and it's under the tournament variance calculator. Primedope.com slash tournament dash variance dash calculator. If you're a cash game player, well, clearly your bankroll is going to um, trickle up a little bit more often. Um, they actually have a, another calculator where we can calculate cash games. Uh, what's our big blind per 100 win rate? Let's say two and a half, sure. Standard deviation, mm, let's make it 100. Number of hands we want to simulate. Let's simulate how many hands you want to simulate. Let's simulate uh, about a month of decent full-time play. So that's going to be uh, third, so 250 hands a day times 20, 1,000 hand, hands every four days times five. So 5,000 hands, is that right? Is that it? Doesn't sound right. Yeah, 5,000 hands. Um, we're gonna simulate this 20 times. As you see, some, some of these times, here's the uh, break even line right here. You see, it's kind of like 50-50 above or below. This was a particularly bad sample. You ran a little bit bad. But as you see, we're actually down a decent amount of the time. Here we have some stats, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is relatively high variance, I think. Probability of loss after 5,000 hands, 43%. This is what happens when you play with a low win rate or when the rake is high or whatever. So anyway, that is all very important to understand that variance exists. I mean, if you, you ask like good, solid cash game players online what they're experiencing, and it's something like this. You can play 5,000 zoom hands in a day with a low win rate and you're down 42% of the time. That's normal. Don't be annoyed when a normal thing happens, right? You wanna make sure that you are actively learning and moving forward. Let's see, you all are asking me some questions that I'm not reading. Um, am I gonna play all those tournaments in Florida? Yes, I'm the bomb, thank you. Is that actually coffee or tea? Today is straight black coffee from McLaughlin Coffee. They'll give you a discount if you use code POKER when you check out, McLaughlin Coffee. All right, let's see. You re-raise re re versus straightforward lumpers in the cash game book. Well, good. I'm glad you, glad you did that. Or maybe you re-read versus straightforward lumpers in the cash game book. And now you're doing great. Good. Am I going to play the Metro Card Club in Manila? I don't know anything about that, so probably not. Everything you do conveys information. Indeed, indeed. How hard is it to be 25 no limit when the rake is five cents on a dollar? Uh, depends on if it's capped or not, right? If it's capped at like 15 cents, it's not all that big of a deal. If it's capped at, um, you know, $10 or uncapped, then you're going to have a difficult time beating any game like that. You think this is stout. Does it look like beer? It does look um, pretty dark, right? I enjoy my, my uh, coffee and beer, both relatively dark. And um, obviously we drink the black coffee. Look, if you can't drink your coffee black, in my opinion, it means it's not very good coffee. So... Figure that out. That being said, my opinion on coffee is not all that relevant because I'm not a coffee connoisseur. I make my coffee using an AeroPress. I asked the guy at McLaughlin Coffee, who's maybe here with us today. He uh, grinded it up really fine for me. To be fair, probably need a new batch. But anyway, this is very good. So anyway, back to persistence. Understand how variance works, right? Especially with that tournament, vari tournament variance calculator over 200 tournaments, which is, gosh, probably what I've played over the last uh, three, two or three years because really I only get to play like what, 10 tournaments a month on average? That is 120, 120 a year, so 240 every two years. So I guess I play more like 500 tournaments over the course of um, since having my kids. Probably less because I took a few months off here and there, right? Maybe I've only played 300. Um, you're going to have ups and downs, and I'm slightly ahead in tournaments over the last three years, and it's because I've actually had a decent amount of deep runs, but they've all been 6th to 13th place. And 6th to 13th place doesn't pay the bills. It'll let you break even. It'll let you win a little bit. I'm up like 50K or something, which, you know, 50K is a lot of money. But it's like a ton of money. And I understand that when you don't put in volume, you will not have a nice, nice upwards curve. Lexi in the house, good morning. Variance can be brutal, but you just have to power through it. It's all about volume. It's about volume, but also persistence. And a lot of people don't have the persistence. They get annoyed. They get angry they quit they take a month off because i think taking a month off is going to change the cards whatever like all these thoughts are kind of asinine and you have to understand that all you can do is play great 
and play a lot. If you look at a lot of the best players in the world, a lot of them play a ton. Like, a lot. Um, one of my friends, David Peters, he's playing these million-dollar buying tournaments, but he didn't start that way. He started off playing $10 tournaments, and you know, he was grinding it up. And for the longest time, he had horrible results in $10,000 tournaments. The day before he won his first 10K, we were uh, standing down in the basement in, in Malta at a, a place we were renting together. And he's like, man, John, I don't know why I'm even playing these $10,000 tournaments. I literally never win them. And he won that one. And then um, we went out and partied the next day at 6 a.m. He was awake playing the $100 buy-in tournament, the kickoff on PokerStars. So he plays all the time. His life is devoted to it. And after that, he started winning and winning and winning. That said, I'm sure if you talk to him now, he's probably going to say, Jonathan, I never, I never win in these million-dollar buy-in tournaments because he only played four or five of them and lost all of them, right? And it is what it is. But if you ask a lot of the best players in the world, that is roughly how they operate. They play a lot. They get back in there. They're, they know they are playing with an edge, and they're always working hard on their game to ensure they are playing with an edge. So... Don't give up. Like Lexi says, you have to power through it. You heard a rumor. I'm going to be joining the field at the Best Bet Bounty Scramble in October. I, as far as I know, I will be there. I'm going to be a bounty in Jacksonville, Florida in October. Come say hi. I'll be arriving, I think, the day before the tournament. There's a $2,000 tournament or a 20K or something. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. We'll have to scope it out. But I definitely will be a bounty in that event. So come say hi in Jacksonville, Florida. You played 10 hours yesterday. You were down two buy-ins. Not a big deal. You say you ran like poop. Two, down two buy-ins is irrelevant. Look, when I used to play 5-10 no limit in a soft 5-10 no limit game of Bellagio every day, I would be up or down $3,000 every day, give or take. And that's just normal. I mean, get used to it. Um, usually, I was actually up or down like half of the time on a daily basis, but my wins were typically bigger than the losses. Wins were like 6K wins. Losses were something like 3K losses. Well, I'll do a breakfast in Jacksonville. Maybe. We're going to see how this breakfast goes at Hard Rock. I'm going to be there. Um, I arrive tomorrow. We'll be doing a breakfast on the day of day 1B. Check your email if you're on my email list. If you're not on my email list, shame on you. You probably didn't get um, probably didn't, didn't get the email. <laughs> it's nice meeting me this summer. You hope to play against me in the future. Well, that's, that's aggressive. Don't know why you think I'm not a very good poker player. All right. You busted roughly 12 tournaments consecutively. Get used to it. 12 tournaments is nothing. This World Series, I lost um, 14 in a row. And I had decent cashes on either end, so that was lucky. It paid for all the 14 in the middle, right? That's normal. I mean, again, this World Series is a great example of what I was saying about how you just have to be persistent. Because at the beginning of the series, I took a 8th or ninth place. And at the end of the series, I took a 13th place. And realized either of those could have been way better or way worse, right? We could have just lost a flip earlier in the day or whatever. Um, I remember the one I took 13th in at the end of the series. I think I won like five out of five all ends. And then I lost two and I was out. But I won five out of five. It's kind of hard to do, right? Um, anyway, you have to understand that the variance doesn't really matter. What you have to do is you have to consistently grind and play with an edge. What a lot of people do is they get annoyed. They end up tilting. They play poorly. And then the results go off the deep end. And they wonder why. It's because they're not playing well. Dietrich says, take time off to avoid tilt. See, like, I don't really think that is a solution. I think the solution is to realize that variance is irrelevant if you're playing in a game where you have an edge and you're properly bankrolled. The problem, though, is that everyone thinks they have an edge. Um, I was reading something on Twitter the other day. Someone was making a, proposing a question, like, how many people out of a 10,000-person field think they are in the top 250 of the field? And the answer is probably, like, 3,000 of them. And if 3,000 people out of 10,000 people think they're in the top 250, clearly a lot of them are delusional. And that's the problem with poker, or the reason poker is successful, is because a lot of people think they have an edge. So you have to be very, very, very brutally honest with yourself. Mark says, if you want to level up with your coffee drink, you can get a good grinder and buy whole bean coffee. Yes, I completely agree. I did that for a very long time. But, like I said, we have the kids. Kids require sacrifices. No more whole bean coffee and grinding because it takes four minutes. And um, I have a hand grinder. You grind it up. It's nice and slow. It used to be so nice in the morning. I would grind the coffee. I'd smell the coffee. I'd drink the coffee. I'd press the coffee. I'd drink the coffee. <sighs> Time is limited, though, now. As you see, I couldn't even put on proper clothes for all of you. What other ways can you combat variants? Put in a lot of volume. Make your own games, right? This is why... 
a lot of the best, biggest winners in cash games are never even hear of because they make their own games. Why don't you write a book about how to bust a tournament? Or how to bust me out of a tournament? Oh, hi, what's up? Want to come in? Oh, we have a guest. We have a guest. He's back. Don't fall over. Don't fall over. Uh, James is back for another visit. Say hello. Hello. What are you doing? Stand up. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Can you say, what do you want to say? I like to eat that. You're going to go have food? Oh, no, you just had breakfast. What would you have for breakfast? Do you want to say anything? Nothing? Nothing today out of you? You want to show them your boo-boo again? Yeah. Show them your boo-boo again. James stuck his hand in the elevator. It bled all over. But you're okay now? Yeah. You'll survive? Oh, go help go help Grandpa with Thomas. Go help Grandpa. See ya. Love you. Bye. No, you need it. no, I need it shot. I need it shot. Bye-bye. Go help Grandpa. Grandpa has the kids today. Grandpa does a great job taking care of the kids. All right, let's see. If you kept yourself making lots of mistakes at the table, you take time to study. You take a break if you make mistakes. Um, no, personally, I don't. I just study a ton. How long does it take to become a pro? You can call yourself a pro immediately if you're a winning player. To become a gigantic winning pro, three, four, five, ten years, I don't know. Depends on how you go about it, right? How much of your life are you devoting to it? All right, let's see. When you come to Florida, do you plan on playing in Tampa? No, I do not. We're going exactly to Hard Rock in Fort Lauderdale, and I probably won't leave the building. Take yoga and relax so you don't go on tilt. Again, go this idea that, like, why do you have to tilt? I'm so sweaty. Holy moly. It's hot in here. Um, why do you get angry when you lose hands, right? What? Why do you think you have to be annoyed? Who taught you this? You're going to find that humans have this... Um, we'll call it a flaw in this instance, where they model their behavior after others. And most people in life get annoyed when things don't go their way. But understand, a lot of things you don't actually control, right? You don't get to pick when you win or lose a game of cards, right? You can help the outcome a little bit, but you don't get to pick when you win or lose. And so, so don't care about that. Don't worry about that. You know you can, the things you can control are your skill level, which does not mean you're going to win every time. Also, your bankroll, and you can control your volume, right? And all those things, if you control those and do your best, then that's all you can do. You don't get to pick if you win or lose, so I don't care if you win or lose. The idea of I'm losing, so I need to take time off does not make logical sense. Would you play on a site that allows heads-up displays or a site that does not, despite being a higher rake? I am probably going to play on a heads-up display site all the time, unless the games are particularly soft. Um... Problem is, like, Poker Stars is a, a, a very difficult site, but they allow a heads-up display. And I am a heads-up display player because all really good players, for the most part, are heads-up display players because it gives you a ton of information. I like putting in a lot of volume. Heads-up displays let like you put in a lot of volume. And um, that's how I know how to play poker. You notice a lot of good players are Magic the Gathering card players. Are there similarities? Yes. Magic and poker are both games of hidden information and... Un, uh, known information, known information and unknown information, and being able to put those two things together are very important. Really, I think Magic's a more difficult game than poker, at the high level at least. Like at the low level, it's like, ooh, I attack your guy with my, or I attack you and your guy, and you block or not. There's actually a lot of bluffing and a lot of game theory at high level Magic, and that's very similar to poker. But in poker, you know, there's only 52 cards in the deck, right? In Magic, there's like potentially thousands of cards your opponents could have, and that's that makes the game more difficult. What do you mean by make your own game? Make your own poker tournaments. Make your own cash games, et cetera, et cetera. Fred Deep said that poker will never die because of ego issues. I agree. You could walk up to a 2-5 table and interview each player. They would all tell you they're the best. Quite possibly. James is telling me to get out of my office. Yeah, that's about right. You joined poker coaching today. In what order should you do the quizzes, or does it depend on the format? I would tell you to start at the beginning and work your way forward. Are the Float the Turn videos relevant today? Some of them are, some of them are not. Depends on who they're made by. I generally try to design my videos to be evergreen, to last forever. I'm not trying to teach you how to beat exactly poker today in 2019 on August 5th. I'm trying to teach you how to beat poker long-term and develop long-term strategies. That said, I will make some videos saying how to exploit the regulars in today's games or the recreational players in today's games, and I try to make that very, very clear. That's what that is. But my content is designed to make you a better poker player 
forever and give you the tools to be a better poker player forever. Anyway, though, at Poker Coaching, by far the most beneficial thing, in my opinion, are the homework challenges. And if you are not going through those, I think you are missing out. Go back to the oldest one, work your way forward. They kind of build on each other. And going through those will make you better than almost everyone you encounter because people are just not doing that kind of work. People are boring. People are, or people are not, people are boring, yeah. People are boring and people are lazy. You don't want to be lazy. Let's see. Could I still be a pro if you had my boys back then? I probably would not have become a pro. It's certainly way easier to just get a job and make money than it is to devote your life to something to maybe make money. You already read Mastering Small Stakes No Limit Hold'em. You play low stakes online cash. What do I suggest? I had a book just come out. Oh, there. Goodbye, shark. Modern Poker Theory by Michael Acevedo. Jonathan Little did a lot of the rewrite. And, um... If you really want to go deep and play online at a high level, this is the book for you. Modern Poker Theory by Michael Acevedo. I grabbed this thing off the shelf. One time, I was in a brief to the Supreme Court. Believe it or not, one of my very good friends, Ken Adams, was the counsel of record. And he interviewed me, Mike Sexton, Vanessa Selps, a few others, on whether or not poker is a skill game. I don't know if the people in the Supreme Court actually read this, but um, it was at least in front of them. We are human, so we can all tilt and get upset. You can, but you don't have to. Understand that just because, I mean, look, the flaw is feeling entitled. That's exactly it. Why do you feel entitled? Get entitlement out of your head. You're not entitled to anything at the poker table and usually in life. And you got to get over that. ASAP. How much influence does skill give you? It depends on the time frame. If you play one hand of poker, anyone can win. If you play 5 million hands of poker, the best player will win every single time. Depends on how long the tournament lasts, or the structure of the tournament, the variance in the tournament, how many tournaments you play. It's not just as easy as, oh, it gives you 53% luck. Get that out of your head. Because at the end of the day, anyone can win in the short run, only the best win in the long run. Make one homework every day or two, and you could, uh, could I say something about overbetting? Overbetting is good, especially when you have a big range advantage or a big nut advantage and you don't mind protection. And on the river, it's good, depending on the exact um, structure of your range. We have a few webinars on this at Poker Coaching Premium. If you go to pokercoaching.com slash premium, look in the um, turn and river section. I'm sure you will find videos on exactly overbetting. In-depth videos. I'm not going to go through it here because it takes a lot of math to explain everything. Essentially, on the river, if you have a lot of bluffs and a lot of value bets, you can have like 60% value bets, 40% bluffs. That allows you to make a, a big overbet. You can have 55% value hands, 45% bluffs. It allows you to make a huge overbet. So really, it's, just, it's a game theory principle that allows you to put as many bluffs in your range, allowing you to play more hands profitably. Um, also, if your opponent's just bad, Say you think they're always going to fold to an overbet, just always overbet bluff, right? If you think their calling station is always overbet for value, right? Who do you think the best players to be staking in poker, or in poker today? The best players with the biggest edges. Speaking of which, we just, uh, poker coaching, just backed Mike Rashid, I think that's how you say his name, in a tournament at Hard Rock, and he got in the money. He won point, or no, he, uh, I think he cashed for about three buy-ins. That means... Poker Coaching profited about 250 bucks on the deal. Yum, yum. Provided one of the Poker Coaching members a great experience. The community got involved. They all loved it. And um, congrats to Mike. And um, if you want an opportunity to be backed in a poker tournament by Poker Coaching, sign up to Poker Coaching. You have to be a member. And fill out the form. So get on that. We are happy to help all of you. I feel like cash games are about patience where tournaments are more about skill due to the time, thoughts, or pressure. Both games are about skill. Patience is a skill, right? But yeah, you have to make something happen in tournaments. You do need to be a little bit more loose aggressive in tournaments. Also in tournaments, this, uh, the uh, quite often there is an ante in play, which induces action, right? Did I help write modern poker theory? I did not develop the content, but I developed the structure of the book, the... Um, wording, the phrasing of the book, and I also went through it, 
asked a bunch of questions, a lot of clarifying questions, because the guy who wrote it, Michael Acevedo, super genius. He's from Costa Rica, I believe. Do I have his picture somewhere? Here's Michael, looking all very stoic. Oh, here he is on the back, color photo. And um, I believe he's from Costa Rica, so he speaks English well enough, but it's not perfect all the time, so I had to clean up that a little bit, I had to clean up the English. And also, I just had to make the book read well, because, I mean, look, it, it's a big book. There's a lot in it. It's, and it's, an, it's an advanced book. But if you tell me you are playing, um, you know, if you're playing online poker and you're playing 1-2 already, which is like kind of high stakes to, to some extent, 1-2 is a tough game online, then you need to become a very high level poker player if you want to continue moving up. It's not on Amazon. It's not, it, it should be on Amazon. Let's see, I'll go to Amazon right now. Let's see if I can even give you all a link. Modern Poker Theory, here it is right here. Let's see if I can get you all an affiliate link, because you know, why not? If you all ever want to give back to me, go to my website, go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash books, click on a book there, and then go buy your stuff on Amazon, and Amazon will throw me 7% of whatever you buy. I think it's 7%. And, um, you know, it's not a ton of money, but hey, if you want an easy way to get back to me for free, if you're going to give Amazon the money or me the money, you might as well give me a little bit of extra money if you appreciate what I do. So the easiest thing to do, just go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash books. Actually, maybe that's not it. You need to use one of my affiliate links. I'm not sure exactly where it is. Anyway, use affiliate links of people if you like their work. It's an easy way to, do, to, do, to give back to the content creators that cost you literally no money. Always try to find the links that they have on their websites because sometimes they're affiliate links and then they get, they get a little bit back. It's always good to give back to the people who do the work, especially if the work is completely free. Like, like this, right? I don't mind doing this. This is easy. I show up, I wake up, I talk about something on my mind, we drink some coffee. But hey, if you want to throw me $2, or you know, if you want to buy a $10,000 watch and throw me 700 bucks, easy way to do it. Um, Omar already asked me, do we think that the old, some of the older videos on the float the turn apply today? Um, some do, some don't. You have to be diligent and understand what you are looking at. Okay, cap 300, 600. Under the gun, plus two, 105 big blinds affected. Big blind, 150, okay. We have pocket nines, nothing up plus two opens to 1500. Cutoff calls, button calls, small blind calls, big blind calls. We are in the big blind. All right, sure, flop comes. Queen, jack, nine, what's your play? Definitely check in the big blind. Check and then probably check raise, maybe check call depending on the action. You're not folding. So it's actually not such a great flop for you, queen, jack, nine because obviously king tens in everybody's range, jacks are in everybody's range, queens are in a lot of people's range. So you're not loving it, but I think with these stack sizes, you're, you're just playing this hand. You're in, especially given the draws are available. Is poker coaching made for more active players? Poker coaching is made for people who want to get better at poker. You can devote as much time or as little time as you would like. Let's see, does Kobo give a set amount back to the purchase even if you use a discount code? Ernie, I don't know the exact way these affiliate structures work. I don't, I don't make much money off Amazon affiliates each month. It's like 100 bucks or 200 bucks. But hey, every once in a while, one time someone bought a $10,000 watch off Amazon and they use an affiliate link. The way it works is if you click on a link to my book and then you go to anywhere on Amazon for the next day or two, I believe, whoever's link you clicked on, they get seven-ish percent. So someone, being very nice, knew they were gonna go buy a $10,000 watch, clicked on my link, bought the $10,000 watch, I get to made 700 bucks. Because I, in theory, sent them to Amazon. Um, let me find you all exact link for my, my Amazon stuff, because hey, you might as well. Go to jonathanlittlepoker.com, then I think we go to, you know, things I use page, I know that'll work. Things I use, be featuring my coffee grinder, by the way. If this page will load. Is this page not going to load? Ooh, let me know if this page is not loading. It doesn't seem like it's working properly. Maybe my internet's just being slow. Don't be slow, internet. Somebody test that page. See if it's loading up for you. It's not loading up for me. You can actually you can click anywhere on the page, though, and it'll take you to a, to a link. Funny enough. For some reason, images aren't, aren't loading, though. That's that's no good. So yeah, someone let me know if that's working. Um, 
Let's see. Good morning. Is a cash game beatable if the rake is or 50, 25 cent, 50 cent game? Rake is, um, I just can't think with Thomas yelling in my ear. Uh, $3 capped for two people, $4. And that seems like that rake is very high. Probably not. Thomas is screaming his head off. Florian says it's loading. Does that mean it's working properly? If it's working properly, that's different than loading. Because on mine, it was quote unquote loading, but it was not. Uh... Oh, there it goes. Maybe it just had a, had a glitch in it. Anyway, these things I use. These are things I use. This is my mouse. Here it is right here. I have um, 10 of these in the drawer right down there in case they break, in case they get old. They actually stopped making these for a while. These cured my carpal tunnel syndrome. I used to get, my, my arm would get all messed up, but now haven't had that problem in forever. That said, I don't know how to use any other mouse. Let's see what else we have. We have the Nutribullet. I blend my green smoothies every day with this. Have this sweet cast iron skillet. It weighs like 20 pounds. And um, I cook food in it. Four hour chef. We have four hour body over here. Oh, here's the uh, AeroPress that I used to make my coffee every morning. There's that. There's the coffee grinder. Anyway, there's a bunch of links there. JonathanLoPoker.com slash product slash things. And then if you click on that and then buy anything on Amazon over the next two days, we get 7%. Let's see. You love poker. It feels like a Ponzi scheme at times. A lot of people play poker in a way that is that makes it like a Ponzi scheme because you all may not recognize this, but at the end of the day, all the money trickles to the top. Why? Because most people don't actually cash out a whole lot. They just play bigger. So... Say you do play one to no limit, and every time you get a hold of, I don't know, $1,000 or $3,000, you play 2-5, and then you either lose it all or move up to 5-10, and then you either win or you lose it all. If you do that process over and over again, you're not going to win, right? Just because you're usually playing under bankrolled in games that get tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher, and there's always a bigger game. So all of that combined will make it very difficult for you to succeed long term. So you can play poker like a parlay, right? It's like a parlay. You're trying to take a small amount of money, turn it into a ton. And if you do that on a regular basis, it's just not going to work out. If you have an idea for my team, can you email? Yeah, support at pokercoaching.com or jonathan at pokercoaching.com. Either one of those will work. But if you play poker with a big bankroll, you cash out, you know, you, you save your profits. You do not spend your profits. Another thing people do is they play one, two. They win 500 bucks. They spend 400 of it on shoes and CDs. I, I probably no one's buying CDs anymore. Back in the day, there was this guy who I used to play poker with. Every time he won, he would go buy two new CDs for like 25 bucks each. Every time. He'd win 100 bucks, spend 50 of it. Win 100 bucks, spend 50 of it. He's broke now. I did not do that. I just kept it all in my bankroll. Slowly grinded up. Kept a big bankroll. Made it impossible to go broke, etc., etc. And, um, you know, don't spend the money. That's essentially it. You can do a lot of stuff to screw up your poker. And um, anytime you take the money out of your poker bankroll and use it for something, that is a really easy way to make it really hard for you to continue progressing and moving up. Should you have conversations with other players who are equal or better than you on a regular basis? Certainly better than you. Equal than you, maybe. Depends on if they're inspired to work hard and work good. Sharkscope says you're 16, 17% ROI and 40% in the money. It seems like you're never winning. If you're in the money 40%, essentially what, what these stats say are that you are not winning the tournament nearly often enough. So you're probably playing way too tightly, and that's going to result in you being either a tiny winner or a persistent, consistent loser. So, um, I mean, I wrote about this. I write about this every once in a while, how a lot of people who have a very high cash rate aren't actually very big winners, or they are losers, because they almost never win the tournament. So you're probably playing too tight. You have problems with your wife. She wants to spend your winnings. Well, understand that the winnings are not spendable. Every time you win, take it and put it in a box and forget about it. How do we end up at the World Series? I had one cash in exactly World Series events, paid for basically all the World Series buy-ins. Um, not a great summer. Basically, break. I think I won a few thousand bucks. It really was like essentially a stone break even summer. And that's okay. I had two good shots. We had a 13th and an 8th place, and that's all you can do. So I have a webinar today it's for the Inner Circle members. It starts in 20 minutes, so I need to go get ready for that. But yeah, you have to be persistent. So many people in all aspects of life want to get rich quick. There are so many poker training sites popping up now, for example, where I already know 
nine out of 10 of those people are not going to stick with it, or they're going to make one course and then quit because they're not going to see the results they want. Everyone wants to get rich immediately quick. Something went wrong on uh, Facebook uh, an hour back. Everyone wants to get rich quick and they don't want to do the work and they don't realize the work they're signing up for to actually be successful is a long grind. I've only just become like in my mind, quote unquote, decently successful in this poker training industry over the last four or five years, which means the first five or 10, we weren't making a whole lot of money. We weren't being all that successful. We weren't impacting a lot of people's lives, but inevitably over time, you grind it up. You grind up skills at presenting, you grind up influence in terms of being in front of people. And um, I see that happening in, in not only the actual poker playing industry, but the poker training industry, right? You look at the poker industry, people playing poker. I know for a fact that the vast majority of poker players who were around and doing okay five years ago are not in the game anymore. Why is that? Because they are not persistent. Did the sit and go icon site do well enough to be successful? It didn't make any money. Float the turn didn't make any money. Poker coaching made money. Um, we're finally getting there. Do you think you beat Phil Helmuth over sit and, heads up sit and goes over 100 matches? Um, definitely if we're playing shallow or medium stacked. Maybe or maybe not if we're playing very deep stacked. Probably though. I played a lot of heads up in my life. I played a lot of heads up sit and goes back in the day. And I was a decent winner in the game. So I'm presuming probably. But hey, you never know. Nar says, you're playing, going through lots of quizzes, now you know how to play against me. Maybe. Good luck thinking that. <laughs> Say you win a thousand in a cash game, best strategies. Several smaller buy-in tournaments or one big one. Uh, if you win a thousand in cash games, just play more cash games. Understand that cash games and tournaments are different. And if you're good at one, it does not indicate you're going to be good at the other. So don't think in your head, oh, I want money at tournaments, let, or at cash games, let me fire it into tournaments. That is the exact wrong way to try to play poker, in my opinion, because usually you're going to lose the tournament. So you have a decent amount of skill. You win 1,000 in your cash games. Then you punt it right into a tournament to try to get rich. It's a great way to parlay your money, but parlaying is a great way to never end up with any money. I discuss this um, when I talk about satellites a lot, right? Let's say you play a $100 satellite to get into 1K. You're 1 in 10 to cash the tournament, the satellite. Let's say you're 1 in 8 if you're really good. So now... Say you win it one in eight times. Now you're one in eight to get in the money in the regular tournament. If you're, you know, 15% of the field gets in the money. So that means one in 64 times you play a satellite, you get in the money. That means if you play it every single day for a year, you're going to get a whopping six caches each year. And most of those, if not all of those, are going to be min caches. So say you get back um, 60 buy-ins, but you put in 360 buy-ins. That means on average... Maybe not even on average. I'm not sure. I'm not may not be using the right math terms. In general, you're going to be down about um, 300 buy-ins each year. Maybe 250 buy-ins each year. How's that sound for a good a good setup? You just want to be down 250 buy-ins each year? I certainly don't. So that's why you don't need to be doing parlays. Uh, do you think six max helps full ring tournament game? I think if you're playing well at six-handed, it'll generally help you learn to think about poker in a fundamentally sound way. How do you sort out your preflop range? Go to pokercoaching.com, go to the tool section, and follow the preflop charts. There you go. Um, you don't have an option moving up since the only games in your area are one, two. So you tend to invest after you made a chunk. Yeah, there you go. What are my thoughts on chasing draws? It's not really chasing draws. Don't think like this. You're, you need to think in terms of how much equity do I have? Say your opponent bets half pot and you know you're going to get there 40% of the time or 25% of the time, whatever. It's probably okay to call because you have odds plus implied odds. Read my first book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, Volume 1. Are we going to have a show Wednesday? No, we're not going to be here until next Friday. Thanks for bringing that up, Louis Philippe. Wednesday, I'm in Florida. Next Friday, I'm in, or this Friday, I'm in Florida. Monday, I'm in Florida. Wednesday, I may be in Florida. So we're going to skip the next four shows. So um, the next episode of Weekly, what's this called? A Little Coffee. The next episode of A Little Coffee will be on Friday. I'll tell you the date. It'll be on Friday the 16th. We're getting back in the poker playing swing of things. We're going to try to play poker about one week a month. Act like that's a lot. It's not really a lot. 
It's a lot more than I have been playing. Um, I took six months off when I had my second boy, Mr. Thomas. And um, it, it's fun. It's always fun to take a little time off, but it's also fun to get back in there and get on the grind. And I'm happy to be there as much as I can. But at the same time, I'm happy to be here with all of you because that's how you actually impact the world and help people level up. It's better to run it once, twice, three times. If you think you're ahead, I don't think it matters at all. I prefer one time because one time will result in people who have a weak mindset going on tilt when they lose. And I love making people go on tilt whenever they have a weak mindset because then they just go off. And I know I have a very strong mindset and I don't care if I win or lose because I'm properly bankrolled, right? Get properly bankrolled and forget about the idea of like decreasing variance significantly or paying to decrease variance. Poker stars just introduced this thing where you can now pay more rake to have lower variance when you get it all in. I think it's awful for the players because yes, they're gonna have lower variance, but they're gonna also have a lower win rate. Just, they're getting more money raked away. So you don't want that. Just play properly bankroll, be disciplined. Realize poker is not a great game to get rich quick, but it's an amazing game to get rich slowly. If you have the discipline, if you have the long-term persistence and the drive to succeed. That's gonna be it for today. Good luck, have fun in your games. I wish you all the best of luck. If you're in Florida, come to my breakfast. Try to not win every hand against me. And that's it. I'll see you all when I see you. Bye-bye.